Hey, what's up guys? Ravenclaw here and welcome back to the Ravenclaw channel. And today we are going after every single spirit beast in WoW. You guys have asked for a couple of different ones recently, so I thought let's go and get every single one in one hunt. All right, guys, let's go. Okay, guys, so the first Mana Saber is located at the top of Surumar, just up here. Now, these ones here for a level 120 are very easy to get. There's no special techniques. It's literally walk up to them and tame them. If you are lower level and wanting to come and get these guys here, you will have to come up, like, you follow the stairs up, and the first Mana Saber will just spawn right here in the f entrance, so it'll be very easy to get. So let's go and grab one and have a look. All right, so as you can see, very, very straightforward. Okay. So they look pretty cool, but unfortunately when they first came out, I was really disheartened with these. Like, you'd make something that looks this cool that easy to get. That's very, yeah, very weak, very weak. But anyway, let's go get the other two. Okay, guys, so just after you've caught the other ones just up here, you want to make your way down to the river. And what you'll find is the lighter shade of purple, I think it is, just down here at this cave entrance. And if we, yep. And you should find one just out the front. So let's grab that and have a look at it. Now remember guys, all of these spirit beasts have all of the same abilities like spirit shock, spirit mend, everything like that. So um, it doesn't really matter which one you want to use. It's all about the looks. All right, as you can see, it's that lighter shade of blue. So they go from purple, light blue, and then the dark indigo, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, time to move on. Alright guys, so the next mana saver, the dark indigo one, is found right here on this riverbed just here. And you can see there's the Mayonix over here, surrounded by a bunch of little cubs. I think it's pretty awesome. Alright, lower levels, once again, you'll have to probably kite this around a little bit, or possibly even just take a few hits. Um, once There's no special way to tame it, and all you higher levels, come over and just grab the tame. So yeah, looks pretty cool. I actually like this one better than all of them. I love the dark indigo look. Alright guys, so now we're after the spirit porcupines. And the first one is the red colour. This one is located in the Valley of the Four Winds, walking up and down the cliff face here. Now, these porcupines for lower levels are quite difficult. So I'll show you how, after each one, where to kite them and the best way I tackled them when they were... Um, when I was lower level, but for a higher level, it's also difficult because you've got to get them to below 30% health, right? And the only way I could do that was take all my gear off and literally punch them all in the face. And I can get them to just, just above health, and then I'm able to hit the tame up. Now, if you guys know of a better, cleaner way to do this, please let me know down in the comments, but this was pretty much the only way I could get these guys. Alright, as you see on the screen here, this is the path that the red porcupine takes. The best way that I did it was kite the porcupine around the rocks and up and down. Now, use your concussive shot, anything to slow the porcupine down because if they hit you, they hit really hard. Also, um, they can move pretty quick. So, just get them below 30% health as fast as possible. Then you can trap them and get your tame. Alright guys, now we're on to the green porcupine and this one has a heal. So for you lower guys, what you want to do is to kite this one around the log behind him. I'll show you a quick overview when we get past this scene. Um, the important thing is to kick the heal when it comes up and slow concussive shot, tar trap, whatever you can do to slow the porcupine down from hitting you. Um, now, once again, higher levels. You've got to strip it down and smack him in the face. Okay, so as you can see, that's the log where the porcupine spawns at. All you need to do is simply kite them around the, the log, um, slowing them as often as possible and kicking the heel every time it comes up, okay? Um, if you find that it's catching up to you too much, try and um, mix it up a bit, running around the rock and the log as, as well.
Alright, so here we are in Kunlai Summit to go for the blue porcupine. Just a quick tip, for your high levels, obviously once again, strip it down, smack them in the face, good to go. But for your low levels, these, this one does not take any slow effect. So you have to make sure you disengage, cheater, whatever you can to keep your distance to keep the damage going until below 30%. Um, once you hit 30%, then you want to turtle and then you can um, tame him up. Now, I will show you the best way to go so you don't get yourself killed while getting the tame. Alright guys, so as you can see, here is the overview of the mountainside. Now there's two ways you can do it. One is the longer route and the other one is the quicker but more dangerous route. So if you have a look, the blue is the way you need to kite him down, running along the snow. And then once you get to the bottom, run back up. Don't go too far past where I've lit there because otherwise you'll um, he'll run back to his uh, spawning point. The other one is if you jump down the cliff, you may need to make sure you have disengage ready. So that way you don't die when you hit the bottom. Um, but other than that, just mix it up and as long as you keep enough uh, distance between you and him, you'll be good to go. Alright guys, now we're at Mount Hygel for the first of the four amazing cats. Now, Anchor and Magria share the same path as you can see here on the map, okay, but they spawn at different times one or the other one will be up so that I, that's what i'm aware of anyway um now these guys can one shot you with your armor on okay it was a mechanic when they first got released then i tamed one not long ago and it didn't do anything to my armor and then <laughs> i went to tame it again for the video and as you'll see i'll show you it actually one shot me now their level is 122 but you can still tame them so don't worry about that um but a simple, mat a simple matter of it is you can leave your trinkets, your rings, your weapon and everything on and just strip everything off and you'll be good to go. Okay, now on to Magria. Very, like I said, same spawn, um, same path, everything like that is anchor, and the same deal with the armor and all that other craziness. Okay, guys, so here we are at Zuldrak, and we are going for the Spirit Cat Gondria. There's nothing really special to the capture of these. this particular cat. It's basically just, if you can find her, go and grab her. Alright guys, next is Lokna Huck. This guy has multiple spawn areas, which I'll show you on the map. Um, I will show you this old footage because it was the second time that I had seen him ever. And I had teamed up with one of my friends just to help her get Lok because she hadn't had any luck with Lok for a few years. So yeah, uh, just remember this is a highly sought after spirit beast, so you will have to camp his locations quite a lot because I believe it's also um, part of a an achievement too to kill. So yeah, just hang in there guys and go for the gold. Okay guys, so if you're after the Spectral Griffin, what you need to do is come up to the Flight Master here and in the Griffin's nests, you'll see a feather. Now you have to obviously be in Beast Mastery to be able to see the feather. And it's pretty easy. Now if you are Horde wanting to get this, your main difficulty will be alliance in this whole thing plus the guards and all that it is still possible to do um you just need to come at a time where you can see no one around to give you any trouble so simply you just click the feather it'll spawn the uh griffin and you just go ahead and tame now obviously 
Um, there's, there's, with these later sort of <laughs> spirit beasts, there hasn't many um, major mechanics that we need to worry about anymore, which kind of sucks because I did like the sort of difficulty when you tame these spirit beasts. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, guys, so now we're after the Spirit Raptor. Over here in Orgrima, what you want to do is come to the Valley of the Spirits. Now, if you're going to have, uh, if you know that it's very active over here, you might want to take Camouflage if you're an Alliance and make your way down into the huts over here. If you're Horde, obviously, you're good to go. So what you want to do is you want to come over to Orgrima and fly your way down into this place right here. Okay, so what you're looking for is that little egg over here so hopefully if I land and I just feign death this should be okay I think now what we want to do is we want to get on here okay maybe I'll make my way up there first and then I'll show you okay so we sorted this guy out now let's get the raptor you just click on the egg and the raptor will spawn and you go ahead and tame that having like the grunts and all the other guards not to mention players is going to be your most uh difficult part of this entire endeavor so once you get him let's go and have a look all right and there he is i actually i actually think this looks so good very vivid blue but yeah so that is the raptor and the griffin let's move on Alright guys, so now here we are out at Grizzly Hills for the Spirit Bear Arcturus. Now this bear is also highly sought after, and once again, nothing really special in the taming of this, both high and low level. It's just a matter of waiting around for his really long uh, respawn timer and chucking him on the tame. Alright guys, so, if you make your way to the annoying underwater world of Vajir in the Abyssal Depths, just over here, the Ghost Crawler walks all the way around here. It's really tiny and hard to see, so you want to make yourself a macro that says target, so forward slash TAR space ghost, or if you've got the um, add-on that finds rares, that'll help as well. If you've got yourself the Seahorse, this will help you out in swimming around. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So let's go down and find this guy. Even when the cap, he's on nowhere to get on. So over here we've got beer, we've got loads of beehive things and dung beetles. The chair is gone. Okay, so as you can see, we've found him finally. And uh, let's go get him. There's nothing much to taming this guy. The hardest part is actually finding him. Alright, now let's go and take a look. I mean, if he starts coming, just pick me up with the crab. Okay. Yeah. No, I can't see him at all. Alright guys, so here we are at Duskwood after Lightning Paw the Spirit Fox. So he spawns in bushes all around this graveyard. So it's best that you make a macro or if you've got the add-on that finds rares, that will help a lot. So the macro is simple, forward slash tar light. And if we spam that around the graveyard and he's available, you'll be able to spot him. Once you find him, it's a very straight tame. Just go up and tame him, there's nothing else to it. But yeah, let's move on. Alright guys, so now we're after the Spirit Moost Bullwinkle, which if you come out to Stormheim, I will show you the tame first, and then for you low levels that don't have flying, I'll show you how to get over here uh, relatively easy. So Bullwinkle is pretty easy to tame, uh, lower levels might find him a bit harder obviously with the damage, but yeah, generally speaking, just come down, tame him up, and yeah, let's have a look. So for you lower levels, if you can make your way 
the flight path is pretty close if you get this one here. If you want to make your way into this courtyard, you can simply jump the fence down here and run up this mountain. When you get to the top of the mountain, then what you want to do is jump down. Make sure you use your disengage or if you've got a glider, even better. When you make it to this ledge here, all you need to do is simply jump off. Uh, glider or disengage just before you hit the ground and you're here. That's pretty much all there is to it. Here we are at the spirit bird. Now this one obviously because um, Ben Thalos flies quite high you need to make sure that you can not only tag the bird but also not die when you land. Uh, there's plenty of different ways to do this. Uh, generally speaking, what I like to do is I'll line myself up with this cliff edge here and then just disengage when I get close enough. But, you know, whatever works for you guys. There's plenty of other ways. People drop traps on top of trees and things like that. But uh, let's uh, go and get this guy and we'll go from there. Okay, so that was really sloppy, but <laughs> as you can see, it, it can do a fair bit of damage. Um, this, I don't know what they've done to these guys recently. They weren't doing anywhere near as much damage as before, but they are now. So anyway, essentially, if you can get a chance to trap the bird, you'll be going good. And yeah, all right, let's go and have a look at it. Now we're on to the spirit wolves. So, the first one, if we head out to the Twilight Highlands, uh, this particular spirit wolf spawns in multiple locations. I'll have them listed up on the screen. But if we come over here, pretty sure I just flew past him. Around here, there he is right there. Nothing special to taming this one for both high and low level. Uh, it's just sort of get in and get out. So let's have a look. Alright, I reckon Karoma looks so good. But yeah, but I think... I'm not really sure about how dark it is on top. You can see right through the top of it. But anyway, alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay guys, here we are. We're looking for Skull. Skull takes us to the Storm Peaks. He spawns in three different locations, which I'll show you on the map. Um, Skull is pretty easy to locate. He doesn't go invisible or anything like that when he's out in the wild. Nothing serious to tame him. It's once you find him, you can just simply walk up and tame him. And that's pretty much all there is to this guy, which is awesome. I like this guy's backstory because of him and Hattie's relationship. It's absolutely awesome. I'd get you guys to go and have a look at that if you, had, if you don't know the lore behind Skull and Hattie. All right, guys, and let's move on to the last one. Now, the last spirit beast on this hunt is Gara. Now, I have got a video already on how to tame Gara. It's a little bit of, um, there's a bit of hunting and gathering and all that. So, what I might do is I'm just going to link the video to Gara in my description. So, if you want to go after this awesome spirit beast, the link will be down below. Gara has a really cool look. It's like a met metallic purple and... Yeah, the little quest line is pretty good for a spirit beast. You know, uh, that's what I've missed in spirit beasts at the moment. They're becoming easier and easier and easier to get. I still think that uh, Gara's little quest chain is awesome. And it's unique to beast masters only. But yeah, all right, guys, let's uh, wrap it up. All right, guys, well, that concludes my complete spirit beast guide. That was an insane amount of spirit beasts in one video. So if you enjoy these long and thorough hunts, Please let me know by leaving a like. Let me down in the comments if you have any questions or you have any other tips and tricks for your fellow hunters. And other than that, guys, you keep on sniping. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.